we are going to be allowed to start with 10,000. Am I correct in that? I mean, I, I have to have a starting point. Yes. Right, James, that's what it is. That's what the so, city set aside. Okay, so that's what we're, we'll start at and until we have any type of expenditures. I'll put together a, a, a budget of hard costs and whatever else comes up will be amongst the group. Um, Over from there, but we haven't incurred any costs whatsoever yet. Okay. Well, Sandy was very fortunate to be able to get a hold of uh, Mr. Herbert Munday, I guess. Monday. Yeah. Uh, from the West Plains Charter, at, under the uh, uh, asking of myself and the direction of Mr. Markinson at the last meeting, because they had gotten, ju they had just gotten their uh, charter passed this uh, uh, last spring. And they had a budget and everything like that, so he, he sent us their budget, and uh, I kind of went through it a little bit, uh, and I can give you a, a copy of what they they itemized. Uh, they uh, under contract labor they had an amount for 400 to Mr. Markison. Uh, they had uh, attorneys fees of 7,674 dollars, and I'll just give this to you. I'm just going to kind of write it. Uh, and then they had other expenditures as far as contract labor of $2,242. And then uh, material costs and printing. Uh, basically, they have a they have a web hosting website uh, similar to we have uh, that there was a cost of $71 to. Uh, they had some paper expenses, uh, printing and copying. Uh, they're printing and copying. A lot of it, I guess, was donated, but they only incurred $52.80. Uh, they produced brochures for the marketing of what was done. They spent 100, and basically 11. Uh, they had postage of about 235 uh, for uh, postcards to send out to their uh, fellow citizens, and then they incurred postage costs of uh, all their literature of actually 3,254 dollars, which I thought was. Uh, but, and then they had a presentation binder of eighteen dollars. So, uh, yes. How big the town is this? Uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure how big West Plains is. I did not ask Okay, I just I wanted to put my notes in here. If you're going to produce a charter bill that's about that big for a town of thirty thousand people, they have about thirty-one pages in their charter. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think. They, yeah, it would be interesting to see how how the community is. Yeah, because so they're checking. They're checking now. Right? Yeah. yeah, I do have a copy of the West Plains yeah. Charter. Looking forward, do we intend to produce copies of our charts so people in public can read? Yeah, it's about third of the population right now. A little bit less. A little bit more. And if we produce a book, a charter book, uh, for 30,000 people, and not that everybody wants it, but you need to put it out there, and there will be a paper taken. And I'll be my last series of this. Uh, well, my understanding is that you know, they're made available at certain locations, and they're downloadable off the internet, but well, the community doesn't normally. The internet is not used by everybody. Yeah. It is by you. It is by the man who's in business. But there's a lot of people who are over the age of 50 that won't go near a computer. They don't want to, they read the newspapers. Well, no. yeah, but I mean, uh, and that's one of the things Greg will get into in a little bit later because they had a very good marketing plan of how they marketed all the information out and they had a list of all the organizations that they contacted, they actually spoke at, they went to group homes, they went to a lot of different areas uh, to make sure that the information was out there on the charter, and they passed their charter at 78%. I, I believe, but I, I don't know that it's, I don't know where this, West Plains, where's that? Uh, Southeast Missouri, down by, just, well actually it's west of, or east of North Fork Lake. I think it's not an intermittent suburb. No. Okay, there's plants of difference between the two communities. And, uh, I mean, the, the difference is huge. Okay. 4,270. That's not just a matter of population. Though. Okay, but where, where are you going? Where are you going with this? 
I mean, well, I, I, think, that, I think that if we're going to start throwing out numbers that are extremely low, that you just did, I think that well, I'm not, okay, Greg, you're jumping to the point. All I was really doing was trying to list their, their itemized the cost. Right. Not so much what they spent on it, but the, uh, the items that they were covering, okay? So hopefully, I mean, we, we put together a, a group to go over for budget, and I think it was Mark and Charlotte at the last meeting, and you drew to help Mark, I think. <laughs> And uh, to actually try to put together a budget, or at least the items, so that we can start from some point. Well, I know, but if you're going to do that, taking a city from a rural setting in, suburb, in, in the southern part of Missouri compared to an inner ring suburb in uh, metro, one of the largest metropolitan areas in Missouri, is a, is a bad way to say, okay, well, this is what they spend, so we can expect to spend some of that area too. I don't think that's accurate. I think what we were trying to do more than anything was to get an idea of how they spent their money, not so much the amount, but how they marketed it and what they did. We can put our own amount on it. We don't have to go by their amount. We were just trying to get an idea of how they marketed it, what, what they did. That's more the, that's more the, that is more that this is for than anything else. It would be a good idea. You might check the amount. You might find some cities more comparable to rate town to see how they marketed it. Well, um, at the last meeting, Mr. Markson did recommend West Point, so, uh, but, I mean, I would be interested in knowing what the budget was in the last one, and how that one got spent, so. Well, it's a task force. Yeah, you know, we can have a It's a matter of public record. Yeah. I just reviewed the 2005 final meeting, and it rolled in around 26000 Guys, we don't have any mics, you're going to have to speak up. Okay. Let me repeat that. I just reviewed within the last month the 2005 final meeting of the Charter Commission, and their final expenditure rolled in around 26000 So it would be possible if we could get that information for the Charter, I think it would be enlightening. Well, and again, we're just on a finding the facts. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. But our commission's part of finding the facts, so we can see what tradition has been. I mean, we've got five different efforts that have been made. Right. And well, but those are, those are also dated, too, so the cost well, of them. So, yes, they are. And let's go on, move on. Yes, yes. Move on. Does that mean we're not going to? Or is it going to fall upon one of us here to do it on our own? It, it, I've already had Mr. Markison. All right, I'm just going to go to Westdale. Well, I already have a couple people working on it. And they, I mean, they can help us with that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, I'm just going to say that I don't think that we're going to be able to do that. Well, if we can get the budget back to the commission, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. Well, I'm just going to say that I don't think that we're going to be So we'll make a request with Teresa for a copy of what the final budget was. I'm going to do it. All right, let's move on. Um, <clears throat> are there any other reports other than uh, the old business where we'll talk about, uh, we'll, start, we'll first start with the preamble and articles one and two, and then we'll get into the discussion on article three. Um, if, I don't know how many of us had a chance to look at the uh, MML uh, example or the preamble, but it seems to be very consistent with um, all the communities around Kansas City that I've looked at, uh, Belton, Jeff Sydney, uh, Raymore, Bruce Springs, Lee Summit, West Points, all the preambles seem to be very uh, much alike. And so, Mr. Chair, yes, I have to ask that we, that we produce a draft to work Yes, and that's what I was I did one. I'm not the only one to do one. Okay. This is pretty simple. Is we have 
had a table down here the last time. And we had mics. So we need to ask the city you know, oh, yeah. where, where we can get some mics to do this. One. Because if, if I came here across the table with low voices, they're not going to be able to hear it on the, on the table. Or on the disc. Um, I inquired with Teresa about mics. I'm sorry. I, I inquired with Teresa about microphones, and uh, it was said that it would be too cost prohibitive to bring them all out and then you know put mats over them to you know tripping and so forth. And so it would be one of those things where we would have to get our own mics and. Um, Preferably uh, cordless, but uh, and then I can have to talk about it. Yeah, we're just gonna have to scream. Very put your outside voice. Okay, I know that you, this is one that you you did. I think it is. And was there who else did you mention? That one? I added.
Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bowman. Well, I, I think we need to first discuss the preamble and then the first two parts of the article and then continue on uh, with uh, part two. Um, I just happened to notice, Ted, that in many of the other charters, charters they start with, we the people of, uh, and they name the city, we the people of Raytown, Missouri, in order to provide for a better government for the city of Raytown, Missouri, and secure the benefits. So, I mean, it kind of helps define who's, who's writing this, I guess you might say. So I didn't know that was uh, something that needs to be concerned. But, I mean, that seems to be really consistent with probably about, I mean, out of the six or seven that I've looked at, uh, I think four of them say that in front of it. So I'm not sure how everybody else will look at that. Looking at it, it looks to me like it says the same thing. It's down here, it says the people of the city of Raytown adopt the following. And it says the exact same thing. And it does say that a number of times. Uh, I want to ask you. Go ahead. Sure. I like the sound of it. I think it's consistent with the Constitution. Well, I'm going to talk about it. Can we the people? Okay. Speak up. I beg your pardon. I think I like the sound of we the people. I think it's consistent with the Constitution. I think it sounds good. I think it, the people might embrace it. I, I see nothing wrong with the wording as is, except for that I do prefer the sound of we the people. Good. Can you tell me Article 2 so we can discuss it? No, no. I want to go article by article. Okay. So we'll start with this preamble and we'll go from there. Any other discussion? I mean, we all have something to say about this, I'm sure. Yeah, um, Go for it. Um, I, I just uh, agree with um, Susan about uh, it sounds more in line with the traditional idea for a charter. Um, traditionally and historically, uh, charters, constitutions, Magna Carta, that sort of thing, um, they were implemented in order to uh, restrain the power of government and ensure individual rights. And um, I, I throughout history, it usually starts off with, we have these things, and then this is how we're going to keep those things, as far as, you know, person, property, and that sort of thing. Um, and then it goes into what the limits are on the government that is being constrained. And so this sort of just starts off with, here's how we're going to um, benefits and advantages for the city government. Um, so it seems a little bit at odds with um, historical usage of introductions to charters and purposes of charters. So I would also like to see some wording along those lines. Do you make a suggestion there? I guess. I can. <laughs> um, I sent it to Ted um, before, right before this um, meeting. Um, but that's why I was talking about um, Article 2 is because um, for that reason, um, with such a preamble to describe the rights of the citizens and the restrictions of the government. Uh, Article 2 is, that, uh, as written, is uh, counter to that and expresses how liberally the powers of government can be applied and uh, construed. And my thought was to be more like uh, the Constitution, Bill of Rights, that sort of thing, and ex expressly state what it is citizens have and what the government can do. So uh, my suggestion, which I was just throwing together here, um, if we start off with the, the uh, charter being about the people, every inhabitant of and visitor to the city of Raytown is acknowledged to be endowed with self-sovereignty and therefore the natural right to life, liberty, and property. The city of Raytown shall not infringe upon the individual sovereignty nor upon the protection nor upon protective guarantees provided by the Bill of Rights of the United States. The powers of the city of Raytown shall further be constrained by its inhabitants, the Constitution of the State of Missouri, the Constitution of the United States of America, and the powers conferred by law when consistent with those constraints. And that's just my suggestion. So that was on 2.1? Um, I don't know whether it should <laughs> modify Article 2 or if it should be more of a preamble. So it takes what, did you get that from another model? Uh, um, yes and no. There are various charters that start off with similar types of things. I wrote this myself. Um, but 
there are other ones that include all sorts of positive rights as they go through it, um, which I did not include. Uh, this, I was trying to keep it simple and brief so we can get to the meat of the meal, but um, I, uh, I, I've taken bits and pieces from various charters, both in the three mostly I was looking at other, other ones across the country, some of them back east, so they're probably open. All right, great. And then, Mr. Chairman, is Lisa, is that a motion? No, she no, was, I mean, just, there's no I motion on the table. We're just discussing it. Yeah, we're just if she wanted one. Because I was impressed with it, and I, I think it would be an excellent way to start our charter. Oh, well, thank you. You want that as part of the preamble, is that the I would simply make it section one. I, I've seen oh, it. What is it? One at a time, because I've got Jason and this room next. Well, yeah, I, I think you did a good job uh, with that. I, to me, I mean, I, I see the idealism in that, and to me, I feel like that maybe belongs in the preamble. I mean, that's at least the, you know, the, the idea that comes to mind. You know, and I'd be fine either way, to be honest with you. But to me, the idealism of that belongs within the preamble of the charter. You know, this is this is what we we hope to see this war about. I think the one concern we have to have is. Um, and I think Ted uh, on the construction two point, section 2.2 of this on Article 2 um, put that in there was that these the powers of the city shall be liberally construed because if you remember Markinson uh, did warn us and I, I do agree with him on this point personally that if you if you don't have something to that effect within this then you're gonna have to have you're gonna have to have a charter this thick because you're gonna have to write all sorts of sections on weed control and things like that you know there's there's got to be that, I'm not saying you're taking sovereignty away from people when you, you put that in there, because you're, you're not. What you're trying to state is that, look, there are other powers that the city has that is that are, I don't know if I want to say implied, but by, implied by this charter, you know, in terms of, you know, creating additional ordinances to deal with whatever the issues of the day are. So I do think we have to be at least cautious and make sure we include something to that effect to ensure that, you know that the, the city can can do its job of, of governing this this town. So that's just my two cents on that. Go ahead, Jim. And, um, okay. I, I would like to see in the future that when when we when the individuals are going to make uh, or introduce uh, alternates that a city different. You read it once, and as I listened to it. I saw a mixture of federal, state, and now city all combined in one, but I'm not really sure because um, you just read it one time through, and uh, I don't know if we're all, you know, you're probably all a lot faster than I am, but if I wanted to really look at it and digest it, I wanted to see it uh, at least ahead of time, uh, because if someone made a motion right now, I'd probably just vote no against it because I'm not really sure what it said. Right, I mean, myself also. Uh, I agree with Jim. I'd like to see it in here before it's voted on. Oh, yeah. Well, and I, I, I mean, before, before you speak, I, I'm just wanting to caution everybody, too. I mean, uh, that this is quite a change in the preamble from what has been suggested and what is, uh, I don't want to say standard for a home rule charter, but whenever we deviate from a, the model charter, or what we know has has worked in the past, then I think we're we could be opening our doors to uh, more legal time to be spent, making sure that that's absolutely correct. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, to, to me, uh, keeping it simpler it would be the better. I'll let her speak, and then I'll get back to you. Go ahead. Um. I, in response to the stranger, um, I have seen similar types of preambles, or similar types of, um, <coughs> whatever you would call this, uh, both in either preambles or as Article 1. And sometimes it's just Article 1, it states everything the citizens are entitled to. Um, other times it's just a short preamble. Um, in regards to changing what's worked, this has been around a very long time. Um, modern charters are the ones that are the newer ones, but uh, the, uh, 
13 copies so we can all read it uh, because I'm like him unless it's in front of me and I can really look at it I can't really fully understand all the big words so in the relationship between the words good ten let look very change finish first okay I'm sorry well I think we have to be careful um, about making everything so wordy and lazy mm -hmm. and we tried that before and we got nowhere and I think we need to keep it short and simple so that people can understand it and they can read it and they can say, okay, I agree with that. You give them something this long, they're not going to read it. Let's be honest, they're not going to read it, they're not going to understand it, and they're going to vote no. Well, harkening back to the last meeting, the, the point of, of what I did here was to have this conversation there. As, as Lisa said, there's no intent in any of this to make any motions, but to give us a place to start and to add those words, just like she said, if that's what we see fit. What I wrote here was taken from the uh, uh, the remarks made about past Supreme Court decisions and what passed in other charters and what was approved and what was proven not to, to, to have been uh, uh, defeated based simply upon the way they worked it. Right? I kept it as simple as I could using only those words that were uh, part of the arguments before the court before. It does not mean that these are the only words. Right. Sorry. I do agree. I think it's very good writing, but I think there's too much of it. And I think it needs to be very simplistic into the fact that when people pick it up, they can understand what it says. I agree with what's in there, but Again, you have to go back to, and Brett said this before, about who's going to read this. And so you have to have it in a language that people can understand. And so I'm the best one to put flowery words in a lot of stuff that I write. But this has to be simple and concise and be able to be understood by the residents of right now. I personally, I think what she wrote was simple, to the point, and concise. It was extremely clear, and all it did was lay out that these are why we're doing this. This is why we're doing it. It does not set any rules or laws down. It just said this is the reason we're doing it. And I, I got to make a comment, you guys. Don't sell the people short out there. They were smart enough to elect us. So don't you know? Don't say that this is too long for them to read and stuff like that. Because it's not the case that they will read. They're, they're pretty fun. Along those same lines, I think there is a, a, a line to be watched being concise and being We don't want to go there. I think that the people out there are smart enough to actually understand a large uh, portion of this material, but I think we need to remember too that it is part of our job to educate them about what we're doing. And if we do that well, I don't see where there may be any major issues. I let the language of what Lisa wrote, although it seemed to me it, it sort of muddled, um, as someone else may have already mentioned, the uh, preamble of the powers in, in the uh, Article 2. So again, seeing it on paper will be a tremendous advantage. Okay, so <clears throat> um, I think at this point, since we don't have the ability to print that here uh, for all of us to take over, I think we'll probably just table that to the next meeting. No, 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 no preamble. Um, let's go ahead and then go with Article 1.1 1. 1 and 1.2. 1.1, 1. 1. Uh, 1. 1, uh, again, is very consistent. Uh, there is one concern with what I wrote there that it is not. <laughs> okay. 
Go ahead. I think we need to know what's in the office of the city clerk that, that, that outlines those boundaries. If that is the place where those boundaries are being maintained, and not suspect that it is, yeah. Yeah. then we need to see it and know that it's correct. I think that's just simple due diligence. The rest of that, this again is there was a, a long section about um, uh, Sue's brought before the court about whether or not you had to put those boundaries in here, and you do not, as long as you can define where they are kept and where they are maintained, and that it's lawfully done. Uh, and so I think the due diligence would be as simple as saying, show us what you have. And I have seen in other charters where they've actually made that map at the time of the charter and an uh, appendix to the charter so it can be referenced directly. Which we can do. Uh, I haven't seen it myself, uh, at least in years past. It's large and complicated. Like the boundaries of the, yeah, the, the description. description of the boundaries. Oh, the description. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, like the state of Missouri, this goes to be everywhere. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I, I mean, would you want to amend uh, our, I should say amend it, but make a correction to the 1.1? 1 .1? I would like to point out that we need to see it. Okay. Right? Again, this is the simplest language I think could possibly be written. Uh, and it assumes that one thing and that those boundaries are, are set out and on file in the office of the city clerk. I mean, it's, a, it's an assumption that I think would be a mistake on our part to just make that assumption without seeing what's in the city clerk. We could definitely get an answer to that by the next meeting. Yes, um, it's in Article 3, it states basically the same thing, that the city clerk will keep the records. So, you know, I mean, we do need to look at Choose one and stick to one term throughout the rest of the document. 
in my opinion. Any other thoughts on that, Janet? I don't think that we should just use one. I think we throughout the whole document. That way when people are reading it, they don't see, you know, a whole bunch of different ones and be confused. I would agree. Um, I've seen plenty of contracts where there's, for instance, one party is I, we, and the other party is you, they, um, things like that, and it just keeps things much simpler than using different terms. Um, and so if we can keep it to Term here, term there, whatever it is we're going to decide to use on, that uh, it would be more straightforward. And we might not even end up having to have it, but I guess we can see maybe as we write it, we can come back and that once we sign up. I like Lisa's point about watching to see whether it needs to be amended after it's written, but um, I suggest that initially going with the split city of Raytown is already in the city of Raytown, the interchangeable might be uh, enough. Right. Yeah. 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 Preliminarily, at least. Um, I, I believe Ted had told me earlier, maybe he told us, I can't remember, um, that he had seen City of Raytown, well, assuming it's Raytown for the argument's sake, City of Raytown and the city used in most of the charters he had looked at, so we just used those two. And I saw that both in prior charters and I saw it in the sample charter. Um, the other thing is, I have to confess, I haven't been, I haven't worked here, I know that it's a habit to use the term the city. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, I just know that it happens. Any other discussion? And I concur with that uh, because it does say the city of Raytown is already in the normal sense. It doesn't need to be seen. So the decision might be then to read in the terminology in section 1.2 that, so that it can be interchangeable. I mean, I, I would mm -hmm. tend to agree with that. I think you Even if we, uh, I, I suggest we leave in the terminology, terminology section, even if we do not use interchangeable just so we define the terms. Okay. Yeah. And you can change the, the name of the section to definition to if, that's, if that makes it more comfortable. It, it, it does raise the question about people, residents, and citizens. So. Right. If you're writing a charter for the city project, it seems to me most people are going to know that whatever you're talking about, if you say the city or our city, that's what we're talking about. Unless I'm misunderstanding what you guys are talking about. Well, I would agree with that, except for then you get into some legal parameters of uh, it as far as exposing that. Any other questions over I just I would say that for this, to use the city of Arlington, Missouri. Yeah. Because it's it awesome. defined and it's carried out throughout the document because a lot of times you know these are numbered or whatever and you always know whatever point you're on which city that you're talking about because who knows are some people right and somebody else is going to be right any other discussion on this item yeah just, just a suggestion then just in, in normal language, if I were to introduce my son to you, I would say, this is my son, Ted Asher, and he goes to Raytown High School. Um, you wouldn't always say, this is my son, Ted Asher, Ted Asher, Ted Asher goes to Raytown High School, and Ted Asher is, you know, you, you do use other verbiage, you know, language. So I, I think what Ted says is very appropriate. Sometimes when they write documents, they will go ahead at the very end, they'll have definitions. I think we'll be putting it sort of in a sense to the top of front. Yeah. And the other charters have put it up front too. So, well, at this point, um, in regards to Article, Article 1, Section 1.1, we have consensus as it 
currently reads to where we can have a motion or our first reading on it? Um, I would just, in Pinky's sake, um, suggest moving the comment outside. I, I would then, uh, presuming that, that the, our volunteering to produce just the printed material um, still stands, uh, before we make any motions, I would prefer to make sure, like Jim says, that we have something in front of everybody in writing for them to swallow before we make any motions about anything on this particular topic. We still need to see stuff in the city clerk.
the powers of the city shall be liberally construed. The specific mention of a particular power in this charter shall not be construed as limiting the powers of the city. The, uh, the suggestions that Lisa made and has already read include every inhabitant of and visitor to the city of Raytown is acknowledged to be endowed with self-sovereignty and thereby the natural right to life, liberty, and property. The city of Raytown shall not infringe upon the individual sovereignty nor upon protected guarantees provided by the Bill of Rights of the United States. The powers of the city of Raytown shall be further constrained by its inhabitants, the Constitution of the State of Missouri, the Constitution of the United States of America, and the powers conferred by law when consistent. Well, while some of that may fit in the uh, may fit in the preamble, I think most of that addresses powers in construction. And again, because that last part is not part of the document that I gave you, uh, and presuming the instructions have not changed, we will put all of that together into one doc into one uh, printed document so that it's easier, as I say, to strike and add. I have one suggestion in the second, second, so second line of section 2.1 under powers. It says, uh, I'll just pick it up in the mid sentence, has authority to confer upon any city. I change that to the city because some cities have more powers given to them by the state than other cities. Most notable, I think, is St. Louis and Kansas City has an earnings tax. They're the only two cities in Missouri that have that. And we don't. We will not have it with this chart. So, uh, so in other words, just make it to the city, upon the city, or the city of Raytown, however we decide or whichever you. My only concern about that is the, is context that it is the uh, it's talking about authority of the General Assembly to confer upon the city. Well, about this city, this is the. It might be simpler just to take any and make it a. Could. Or this. Or this. this could, could, or, uh, I, the, the only reason I, I throw that out there is because of the example I gave in St. Louis and Kansas City. But the way I read this, it's the state of Missouri has the authority to confer upon any city, which to me, that's not saying the city of Raytown, that's saying any city inside the state boundaries of Missouri. And so uh, I think the word the city is the right word. It says the city shall have all powers of the General Assembly, all powers upon any city. That's all encompassing. No, it says have all the powers of the General Assembly of the State of Missouri as authority to, to confer upon any city. Right. I see your point. Yeah. Yeah. I like my setup. So it's yeah. Let's not get <laughs> caught up in this. Charlotte's sure next. Well, one thing I would suggest is when it says the city, <clears throat> is capitalized as it is up in the terminology. However, so that the city shall have all the powers and has the authority to confer upon any city, which is any city. It's not talking small about city. the city. Right, small city. And then you have the city shall be So that's the city, which we are referring to as right here. Yeah. And then below in the second one to the powers of the city. And again, the city, because you're talking about my type of property. That's you're correct. Oh. Excuse me. Okay. Okay, just just a little. Um, and uh, section two two under construction, the specific mention of a particular power in this charter shall not be construed as limiting the powers of the at capital C city, comma, whose powers shall be liberally construed. What's the, uh, I just think the 
gives the emphasis of the importance of the city ahead of. Uh, well, I think puts the, the powers of the city in its place just fine, but it's a little bit of a worry. Kind of backseating it a little bit, making.
instead of the city council. It doesn't say instead of, but that you use the board of aldermen. I think when when you talk to most people, most people think of it like the people out here. Because they will say, what's going on in the city council? What's going, you know, they don't, they don't talk about it unless they've been here for a long time, talk about it as a board of aldermen or the DOA or anything like that. So I am not quite sure. I mean, for, to me, I think it should be city council. I don't care one way or the other if, you know, if, it, if that's a big deal, it's not that big deal. But by a one class city, we are board of aldermen. By those statutes, right? So if this, so if we put in here that we wanted to be changed to city council, well then it fails. We're not called city council. So I mean, I have no problem with the board of aldermen. It's it has always been a question anywhere you go. And nobody really understands what it is unless right. you meet another city person that's also a board alderman. But I don't know if changing that would change anything else. Except for what printing. Well, either, either one is most right or less right, obviously. Um, alderman is the oldest political term. I think in the history of the world, that was what they called them in England when they wrote the rights of Englishmen, uh, where people had no rights and they said because we're Englishmen we should, they called the people that know this elderly. So all of them come from that word. Um, and whether what we choose to use is, makes no difference. For example, St. Louis, which is probably much bigger than Raytown, they're all of them. And it's just what you choose to do, um, whether you choose tradition or whatever. For me, only uh, only one thing that uh, I would suggest is we want to keep the people of Great Town as comfortable as possible. So okay. that's, that's uh, what would be my concern. Okay. Uh, Jim, I also did the same thing. I looked up the definition of all of them and found the same thing. I found out the city of St. Louis was also a board of too. So I mean, it does stay consistent. It's somewhat interchangeable. I'm sorry, Chicago, too. Okay, okay I don't know. Michael, do you have your hand up or do you just let me go? Okay. Tim. Would it not uh, cost the city quite a bit of money to change from board of aldermen to city council? That I don't know. Um, what kind of expense? I mean, if there was a different <coughs> reason for changing the name, uh, then I don't think an expense would be. Uh, uh, a factor to consider, uh, and but since the word councilman and alderman seem to be interchangeable, uh, I'm okay with either one. I think you had. Well, I was just gonna say, if you know, ten years from now, if it's changed, there could be a confusion back because all the ordinances say word of alderman. Well, let's see that all be changed. Right. That's a small cost. Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard anybody express that they wanted to change. Any citizen express that, you know, they wanted to change from board to city council. I don't think they, they do. They don't think about that. They just, when you're talking to them, it's usually the city council. It's not the board of aldermen. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing I don't care. And they recognize the city council as the board of aldermen. <laughs> Great. I, I think that uh, Board of Alderman, I, I, I used to agree with what most of you are saying, but it really sounds like a term from the 19th century, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think if you go out there and talk to most of the people out there, if you talk to people, I think you'd have 100% understanding when you said city council. When you say Board of Alderman, you're not going to have 100% city council. Uh, I think it also is really telling when you see when people run for office, they put city council on their signs. You know, I ever see BOA or Board of Aldermen. So that in itself speaks to what is accepted and what is expected by people. I disagree wholeheartedly. I think most people in Raytown would want to change to city council. 
it's referring to just all, all, all of these state, federal, or the charter. All right, so well, let's move on to 3.2. This is going to maybe be a lengthy discussion. It has to deal with composition, qualifications, elections, and terms. Yeah, just a section 3.2, composition, eligibility, election, and terms. Um, and so, this is going to be interesting, but composition, so section A, composition. And um, this is, again, my personal opinion, so Assuming that we keep Board of Aldermen, there shall be a Board of Aldermen consisting of 10 members elected by qualified voters of their respective boards as provided, and there will be a future section, as provided in the nominations and elections article of this charter. So we have yet to write that, but the nominations and elections charter, or excuse me, nominations and elections article um, will invest, obviously, you know, more description of this, but I know there's been some talk, I wrote this down in the email, um, I said this option is a similar structure, 10 members from respective wards, later in this article it will discuss uh, the wards and election terms of the Board of Aldermen, assuming we keep that name. Um, there's been some discussion with some folks I spoke with on this commission about discussing the number of aldermen and such. Now for me, again, personally, um, I, I'm in favor of keeping 10 aldermen, um, and later on we'll discuss the wards even, but I'm in favor of, not to jump ahead, but the ward system we have now as well. Um, I think it's rather nice for our constituents that we have uh, two aldermen from each ward, in each ward, and every two years there's an election. And I know I'm jumping ahead on some of this stuff, but that, all those factors obviously uh, relate to the composition of, of this city council or board of aldermen. So, Again, that's why I wrote it out that way, and, and obviously this is open for, for discussion. I think the number of older we have is great. I don't think that needs to be changed. And I think how they're elected every two years, I think that has worked good in the past, and I think it's for four. And I think it will continue to work in service well in the future. I don't see any need to change that. Right. Any other discussion on that part of it? I mean, I can't imagine what expense that would be changing all the words from 10 down to 4, or 5 down to 4, excuse me. So that needs some work for another committee. And most people I talk to is that they to keep it the way it is now. I, if you, I know we've had a couple of uh, different city administrators that wanted to reduce the size of the board, size of the board. But when you reduce it to five or six members, let's say somebody in your ward is in your arm and would be is gone or ill and can't be there for some time. You have no representation from anyone in that board, so I, I think we should keep it. Is there anybody that thinks differently? No. Jim? I would share that in the last charge commission it was discussed, and, and you really can get into a deep and long discussion of changing it, why it might be better or whatever. But um, again, I'll just go back to what we said in day one. We want to keep it simple and don't want a lot of changes. It's worth very well for the city breakdown. I think, I think the uh, Last 10 years, this uh, board's done it very well, what they have. And again, it makes people feel kind of warm and fuzzy when you don't see a lot of that change. And I think it's also offered consistency. Because we used to have, be elected like every two years, so everybody was running every year, and it was right there. So when it finally went to the staggered system of four years, there was a lot more uh, solid to the because you just didn't get in there, learn it, and you had to run again. So, and I think, you know, and I've heard the same thing about having 10, you know, reducing it down. But I think it has worked for the city of right now, and it does offer representation through that. Right. 
Yeah, I haven't heard anybody suggest that we change anything with this at all on this. Can we just move on? Okay. So I just wanted to make sure everybody had a chance. I just want to say I like the concept. Obviously, the continuity is a big thing. Like you know, like the Senate of the United States is really you know, it's only part of its elected each time. So, speaking as a new alderman, um, or fairly new alderman for a year, it was it was nice to have folks that served that I can kind of talk to, you know, and kind of learn some things and how the process works. So, anyway, moving on. All right. Um, and again, I'm going to go off again, but um, if Charlotte or Sandy wants to chime in on any of this stuff, I mean, please do. So, yeah, uh, eligibility, um, and it says, uh, to be eligible for the Office of Alderman, a person must be a citizen of the United States, a qualified voter of the city, and shall be, have been, or have been a resident of the city for at least one year prior to his or her election. An alderman shall be a resident of the respective ward prior to their election and during the entirety of their term from which they were elected to. In addition, nor shall any person be elected or appointed to the office of alderman who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes. And I wrote down so that I added in my in my parentheses to the, in the email I sent out for with this. It says I added the last couple sentences in order to stay consistent with the structure we have now on this that I'm in favor of. And it's something that I feel is uh, uh, becoming, excuse me, this could be a point of contention, obviously, because there's lots of discussion here with this. But uh, long story short, um, I know the current structure is you have to be a resident for a year. Um, you also you know, have to be a citizen of the United States, qualified voter, uh, and you have to have, you know, can't have a, no unpaid city taxes and issues like that. So, again, uh, anyone please? Is there anything about a, a time period of being in the ward itself? And, and in this particular one, it did not. And I know. Um, current ordinance is 180 days. Well, then, I'm so sorry, it's 180 days. Current ordinance is 180 days. For, for, the, for the ward? For the ward. Okay. But it's not very long. Yeah, well, I know you brought up in the email. Um, Discussion point. Yeah, well, I, I, point, so. if I may. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I, I think that uh, we ought to expand the qualifications for elective office to two years in a resident of the city and one year in the in the district or ward, whatever you want to call it, that you will be representing. And uh, I think the reason is very simple is we just want people to be have their feet firmly planted in the community before they jump in. I think it also it also protects what I've seen happen in past city councils where people literally jump from ward to ward and run for other elections. You know, uh, it's not meant to be that way. If we're going to do that, you ought to create a large seat to be honest about it. But uh, I don't think that anybody here wants to do that for the last discussion. If we like the ten to five ward set up and two per ward per square mile, whatever it is. So that's what I would like to consider would be two years of uh, residency within the city, one year for an elected office, but more involved for someone to have to have been a registered voter that has been in the district for one year. Okay. Uh, there's something else I want to bring up at this point. I don't know if this is in here, but are we going to be able to discuss the or is that kind of a later session? That's a later, that's the next session. Okay. And I'll hold on that. First, Sam. We need to put in there somewhere, and I'm not quite sure how to do it. That the person has to be a resident in the ward, not just a property owner, because we have a problem now.
a stipulation. If they can't pay their taxes, they shouldn't be represented. So they should not only be current, but it should be required of them to go with the tax or the attorney. I'm just getting back at the comments of a few people. I, I like what Sandy said. Um, it, it's important that a person be a resident and not just a property owner. They should be a resident during their entire term. Um, I see no problem in extending the uh, requirements to two years for being a resident within the ward. Wasn't that? No, okay. for a city for a city wide office, which is basically one. I, I saw I have no issue with that. I think that the more established the person is in their community, the better they can serve that community. So and, and I also liked what Janet just said. I think those are all four really great ideas. Um, I agree too. I think it should be two years in the city and one year in the ward. Actually, I had down three years, but I would be willing to go with two. Because, and I also agree too with being a resident of that ward and not just owning property in that ward. Because if you're elected, you should be vested where you are. That's right. And, and I agree also on the unpaid city taxes. However, you're going to have, you know, who's the watchdog that's going to know that someone's going to have to pay their taxes. Now, granted, that person will know because they keep getting the past due notices, but if they're not caring at that point, who's going to be the watchdog to do that, which goes into a whole other thing. Um, so, yeah, that's what I have. Um, well, I know the residency is concerned. I did, and I mentioned this in here, I, I did deviate from the MML. Model chart when I wrote down the sentence about um, an alderman says an alderman shall be resident of their respective ward prior to, I added this, prior to their election and during the entirety of their term from which they're elected to it. So I did that, that. Now we have to be careful about the word property owner because, look, you know, I, I think just because maybe you don't own your property, maybe you're a renter in your ward and you want to run for office, you know, I don't want to alienate folks that, that may be doing that. So I think. You, we can, I think it's a great idea to type up that word residency. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I did add that sentence there in the entirety of the term they're elected to. But I, I would stress to be cautious about writing the property owner um, just because you know you have folks that are renters, unless you're talking about like cars or whatever. But anyway, um, so that would be a point I'm just throwing out there again. Um, in terms of Greg's point for myself, the two years in the city, I, I think that's that, that makes good sense to me as well. Uh, one year in your ward. Um, I, I personally don't have any type of issue with that, and um, and, I, and I and Janet, I, I do agree with your point about the unpaid taxes during the entire term. Um, I don't know if that's something that, and I may be completely wrong on this, that the Jackson County Election Board would have some kind of role with in terms of you mentioned maybe a watchdog. I'm not for sure again because I do know when I well here's the deal. I do know when you file for alderman, you obviously have to. You know, sign something that maybe to that effect that you don't. Maybe that becomes, if you were to put something in there like that with that wording, that becomes an every an annual type statement that the alderman have to sign and pride and turn into, you know, the city or, or whoever the powers may be, which I frankly am not aware of. But that would be a point of consideration to examine. So, um, two points I wanted to mention. Um, one as Charlotte mentioned with the. Uh, how does one prove that they live here or own property or so on and so forth? Currently, um, you can pay someone's bills here, gas, water, electric. Um, you can't necessarily get proof for some of those things uh, without a warrant or some such, but uh, there are other ways to skirt that system and uh, make it look like one lives somewhere where they don't technically reside. So how do we define residence and how would we make them prove it? Um, I think that's far more important than the taxes bit um, because that again goes into the lots of people working things um, and I frankly just don't care but <laughs> um, I, I think the residency is, is very important. The other issue um, 
is uh, when we, if we change this to must be a resident and not just a property owner, if we mention property and here we need to be specific that it is some sort of land or a space on land and not just, you know, a car or something movable or just for legal purposes. Okay. Got four people up. Let's go to a cop. Well, I disagree with Lisa about the taxes. Um, Board of Alderman City Council, however, however you want to call them. They're leaders, they're examples for our city. And I think it's important that their taxes are caught up if they have fines for tall grass, whatever, you know. I think that they, they need to be the leaders of the community. They need to set the example. And we need to hold their feet to the fire about it. And I, I think it is important. Um, on the residency thing, like she said, you can, you know, you can have a gas bill or a water bill or whatever, but that doesn't mean that you're living there. So I don't know how you address that, but as far as the taxes, I disagree. I think it is important. And they're, they're leaders and they need to set examples. Well, is it any different than getting them to sign something about paying their taxes, getting them to sign something about them being a resident where they're saying they're a resident? Can you put in there, must reside in their ward during their term of office? Must reside in. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, two issues that are brought up in a, in a very good one. First of all, on the, the, the question of taxation, how to improve taxation, the two guys on their computers, if you are looked in there, where you can. Look up Jackson County government, you can see who in this room has paid their public, paid their property taxes this year. Okay, there's one way, and that's, that's the big one. The other one is the sewer bills, and that's pretty much it, as far as the city council goes. And that's easy enough to do for the city clerk, whom we are already paying anyway, so it doesn't cost one penny more, you'll be happy to know. Now, there's more. Okay, residency, it's very important. Residency, the, the true and real test of residency for person who runs for public office is that they have to be a registered voter. To be a registered voter, they have to be qualified to be registered at the residence where they live. If they do not, if they are not, if they are falsifying that information, if they are using a, you know, an address that's not truly their, their residence, that's a uh, thing in bad trouble with that. Uh, starting with mail fraud, because that's how these things are proven, and, and so forth on down the line. So, it's, you pretty much have a fail-safe way to guarantee that somebody has to live in the ward that they are a resident of the ward, and also on the taxes. So it's not a big thing to check out, and I agree, especially with what Mary Jane was saying. The city council should set an example. You shouldn't have somebody on the city council who doesn't pay, uh, doesn't pay their, their, take care of their properties. You shouldn't have elected officials that tell people about to vote for tax increases when they themselves are not paying for them. And I've seen that happen here in Raytown, where people, uh, I remember not too long ago the school board, there were some members on the school board who hadn't paid their property taxes for two years, while there was a tax increase on the ballot asking people to increase their property taxes. So that, you know, we, we have to draw a line somewhere, and these are, these are hard decisions. And I think that you make it very simple that if somebody breaks any one of these rules, they basically remove themselves from the board. You shouldn't have to go throw them out. They've done it themselves already. Well, what I've seen in a lot of charters that I've read, a lot of it just doesn't say qualified voter, it says registered well, that's, qualified voter. Yeah, so. That's what I was getting to bring. Okay. So, um, if we wanted to change qualified residents. Okay. Right, um, well, of course, I agree with what everybody's saying. That's why it has always been and is in almost every, every charter. Um, I want to just throw out some food for thought. For example, um, your sewer bill, most people think it's a tax, but it's not a tax, it's a user fee. You might want to include the word user fee because, um, again, if you talk to your uh, finance director, he'll tell you it's not a tax, it's a user fee. So you might want to add that word. The other thing is that if indeed you want to uh, enforce this, then you have to have a procedure to go along with it, which means when have you been delinquent enough to be removed from office 
and what is the procedure for being removed from office, and then during the course that you've been elected, you know, uh, you know, how much leniency? For example, even in your property taxes, you can be late. Um, you have to pay an interest, but you know. So the question is, what do you shop for? And you got to think about that because it's got to be in your charter if it is you want to enforce it. Um, and, and the other thing is on resident. The word resident is, and I, I think our secretary uh, kind of mentioned it briefly, but it's very relative what it takes to be a resident. As you can see in the United States Congress, you can live in one state, establish a residency in another state, run for office, and they do it all the time. Um, and I would also tell you that I think I'm correct when I say Shane Pardue was on the board and he was a renter. I don't believe he owned his house. Um, was he a resident? Not everybody thought he was. Um, and he did live in that house. Um, so, and I know that even we had a state representative that represented a great town in the same Louis. Um, for a number of years. So, again, the word resident is relative, you know, to um, if you rent or own a property, or you're getting your mail, or you're paying your property tax, especially to me, property tax would be for your car. Um, and that can even be wishing washing. For example, I have two homes. I have one in Raytown, I have one in the lake. If I want to register my car, my boat, and, and on my other property in the lake, I have to do that and pay on my tax debt because they are cheap. And people do that all the time. I'm not telling you I do that, but again, does that make me not a resident? Do we need the best speech yet? <laughs> well, I'm sharing with you, I'm sharing with you why I think most charters don't want to break that. Because what you can get into. So just think about that because if you want to make it hard for you, you want to really enforce it, then you're going to have to have a procedure that spells all this out and it's really complicated. Go ahead, is there some way to basically what I'm hearing is that residency can mean almost anything. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me we have to be able to narrow that down a little bit more. Um, you know, if you've got an alderman who is not in his ward or her ward, then those people are not getting the representation they should be getting. There needs to be a way to, to make that the residency thing firmer. I don't know how to do it, but there needs to be a way. Well, somebody talked about Genesis taxes, how you going to enforce that. It says right on the tax bill. Do by December 31st. Mm -hmm. That's pretty simple. It's right there. If it's not paid by December 31st, then they are late paying their taxes. I don't, you know, I don't see the dish cutting any slack. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I mean, I think the, the consideration of these matters is extremely important because we do want leadership by example. <coughs> if we have people who are going to pay their taxes and live here, then we should look for other people. However, I question whether any of us is qualified to, and, and certainly uh, that's no poor reflection on anyone here, but I think that this might be an area where we need to get some legal advice on how best to uh, um, package the language on this. I, I agree with uh, Susan that we should look into more about that we should look into <laughs> um, figuring out how to package this, basically. And also, um, if we are to do that, could we maybe determine um, a grace, you know, how long we would allow them to not be residents, whatever we define residents as, for instance, like a month. I know, you know, vacations can last a couple weeks, whatever. Um, illnesses, things of that nature, should we put in contingencies for somebody breaks a hip and is in a hospital, doesn't mean they don't want to represent the board. Should, is it a matter of should we make them not represent the board because they're not there or 
even if they want to be, but they just simply can't. I mean, it's not necessarily a personal issue, um, but um, should there be some sort of information on when they can get it back until we have to go through another election, a special election for that next year, if that's needed? Um, just don't know. Well, if I can interject one thing real quick before I go around the table again. Um, my thoughts on this uh, are, are fairly simple. I mean, I, I agree with the two year and one year as we've been all talking about. I think the matter of residency is just that. I mean, just as if you move from one place to another, you're supposed to get your driver's license changed. It's supposed to happen immediately, if I'm not correct on that. I mean, that to me is proof of residency. Whether you rent or own, I don't think that should be a disqualification as to going and becoming a councilman or all of them in the ward. If you choose to rent your whole life, but you stay a citizen of the community your whole life, that shouldn't be held against you that you just rent. Uh, and so I think these are, reg uh, I mean, I think some uh, fairly simple things that we can do. We could ask Jason to uh, kind of go through what we've all been discussing and rewrite what he's done, and then we can add that to the list. I mean, I don't know if we're going to, you know, get to the bottom of a discussion of whether or not how we prove residency or how if somebody's paid their taxes or something like that. But you know, I agree with the fact that they should have paid their taxes a long time. I mean, it's one of those things. Let me get the tag. Let me get right over here. Okay, that's that's my thoughts. I'm trying to write a description of eligibility rather than investigate those who are not eligible. You cannot hold office if you're not a registered voter, and you cannot run for office if you're not registered to vote in the place that you're running for office. That is the definition of residency as far as all of this is concerned, and it, I don't think there's any way to, to deny it. Right. You can own property wherever you want, but if you are a registered voter here, you are a resident here. You can own property at the lake, you can own property in St. Louis, but if this is where you vote, you may not spend 50% of your time here, but if this is where you vote, that's, that's residency for the purposes of an elected body, in my opinion. Taxes are easily checked on. Right? It's public information. I mean, uh, and I agree with Ray from the owner because if they're living in Rankin and they're, you know, they um, have a driver's license in the, in the address and stuff like that, but as far as who's going to check on this kind of thing, whether, oh, this person may not be here, I think we'd be, you know, I don't think we'd even put that in here. Yeah, it's it's very wary and, and very difficult to find. And who's going to do it? Right. Well, I was just going to say, what Tim says, right? The authority on residency is the Jackson County Election Board. You don't have to worry about having to go out and the city council prove it. The Jackson County Election Board can do this for you. And they will investigate somebody that's being fraudulent in their voting. And they, they, will, they will go after them, too. So um, it's, it's a very good test as to who's qualified and who's not. And I don't think it should be up to us to make have that test. Same thing in the end, we can't. I think we need to scratch that property on the thing off. <laughs> okay. Thank you. If we just said that must reside in their ward, does that not cover everything? It doesn't I think it needs to be said. make any difference yeah, whether they own or they rent. rent. They just must reside in their ward during their term. Well, reside in the registered. Oh, a registered voter in their ward. If you make that happen. Right. It pretty much says that if the way already found it. Yeah. Could we put in there that the city clerk would check every year to make sure that well, all aldermen have their taxes paid for the, for the current year? Would that already be in the. I don't think they could probably go there, but I think, I mean, that could be done by ordinance or something like that. Yeah, I don't want to do something that could be done by ordinance. I like your idea of an annual segment or something. 
your situation is going to be there. Um, and then you're sitting and saying, my taxes are paid, da 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 da. It's their, it's their declaration. It's no one you know, holding a gun in their head. It's just something that's going to happen. That would be the responsibility of the, of the commission or the charter. I think that could be done by ordinance. No, real simply. No, it's too wishy washy. When you do the ordinance, it can be amended by a majority of the board. This is something that's for the people that cannot be amended by the majority of the board. And what you can amend is to take it back to the voters and say, do you want to change this route? And I think it's very, very clearly and plainly stated that we believe that people should have to pay their taxes if they're going to serve on this line of thought. So if you put it as just, a, just a, an ordinance, it, it can be changed. Just as I see ordinances changed by the administrator. I'm not saying change that at my ordinance. I'm saying that the city could have an ordinance that says that the aldermen have to provide some type of affidavit. You might get your for it in, in this document. Yeah. The city clerk, when you run for office, checks to make sure that your taxes are up to the end of January the 1st. You do it every year. And you sign something. You sign something every year when you're running, but you are current. Mm -hmm. that, that's when you're okay. running this after you check. But it's not there every year. Let Jason speak. I'm, I think I may have a possible solution to this problem. So if I was to rewrite the eligibility with the tax component and, and said, you know, um, was, you know, has no unpaid city taxes or something like, and then maybe just mention that there'd be an annual check or something. The point is, I don't want, I guess what I'm afraid of is, and I'm okay with that, but I'm afraid of doing the city clerk's job for them in this. You know, I, I think that the charter says that, look, that they're going to get have, they can't have unpaid taxes throughout their entire term. Then by law, an ordinance, or, you know, is going to have to come and comply with this charter. Yeah. If I put that in there. So I think yeah. if you just show the, the way, if you will, with the charter, yeah. Yeah. the board's going to fall in line if you write it. Or at least they're going to have, they're legally going to have to. They can't. Just ignore the charter. So, you know, I, I think that the idea should be, at least in my opinion, on this, if you want an annual check for unpaid city taxes, to just sit there and say that, you know, that there cannot be unpaid city taxes um, throughout the entirety of, of uh, this individual's term as all. Well. I guess that's my suggestion, if you will. I use the word current. If you said the word current, these are all okay. I'm oh, sorry. If you use the word current. Oh, current, okay. That means that, that, that a long sentence, but that means they're always okay. I Okay, election terms and term limitations. Okay, more discussion. Um, section C here, 3.2. Section 3.2 is uh, part C here. Election and terms. Um, again, this is my, my own personal view. Each ward shall have two aldermen on staggered election cycles, ensuring that five aldermen positions shall be elected at each municipal general election. Aldermen shall, shall be elected to serve staggered four-year terms. The term and order of elected alderman positions shall keep with the continuity from, previous, from the previous structure, or previous structure of government, if you will, and status prior to this chart. I put down this is a way to attempt to write our, our structure that we have now, which I'm in favor of, on election in terms, which I favor. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be debate on potential changes, but the, this is... Uh, my suggestion. So, what did you say prior to the charter? The term and last sentence of the section was that the term and order of elected alderman positions shall keep with the continuity from the previous structure and status prior to this charter. And that is what we are doing currently? Yeah. It, As it requested? Yes. So it, that's what you're referring to? In yes. Previous structure and status prior. Prior to this charter. So, assuming this charter passes, you know, and that this is again, what I was in favor of, is keeping that structure. So that way, that the, 
the terms are on hypothetically if this passes, you know, the, the terms are on the same, right. I guess, uh, you know, course that they're on now. But we'll, I and mean, I just what you mean. The terms are on the course when they are now. Your election, okay, your, your term ends when? April. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so then that way, okay, okay so then, right, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. yeah. So that way, regards the charter passes in April or not, right. I'm, my, my term still expires uh, in 2017. Yeah, April 2017, or at least according to that theory here. So, and um, again, a lot, some of this was taken from MML, and again, some of this was modified with my own writing to, to try to explain the process. So, um, anyway, take it forth with I understand the word structure, but to what does status refer? Status, like in terms of the, the uh, time of the term, when they expire. So it's a status structure. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, that, that's different from structure, or is it? Well, you know, uh, when I say status, you know, I, this charter passes in April 2015, or, yeah, 2015. Um, might be personally, I have two years left on my term. So when I said status, I guess that's what I was implying. Uh, Jason, let me just ask you a question. You've got on here, uh, each ward shall have two aldermen on staggered election cycles. Wouldn't that be? Um, you're right. I don't mind. Scratch. Sorry. <laughs> that will come up later because you have another section in here that talks about every. Right now, if they don't want them in here, they can take them out. 
So I, I think you need to be careful about term limits. Is there a currently term limit? No. No. That's why I'm concerned. That's a substantive change. I'm, I'm concerned that uh, any substantive change like that's going to become a point of contention and could kill this whole project. I, I think I'm, I'm not disagreeing with whether or not we ought to have the right amendment that would be taking the first step towards creating something that's so different that we're running a huge risk. I mean, it is a living document. I, mean, I just think that it is a, it's a popular idea for the charter and I think it will actually help you gain votes. I don't think it's going to take votes from you. Nobody, you're not going to go to somebody and say, hey, we're going to, if you pass this, you're going to have terminals. Nobody's going to say, damn, I'm going to vote for that because of that. I, that's not going to be heard. Do you um, have First of all, I'm not telling you I know which is better. I voted for term limits when the state of Missouri did that. Um, but I, like Greg, I, I thought it made sense. Since that time, I've talked to people who also voted for it that kind of wish they didn't. Uh, I'll throw this out. If you're going to have term limits, you have to have term limits for everybody, not just all of them. It also means you cheat. Um, I don't know if that would be a very good idea. Because the concept of, of, of a person being in a position, and that's what they're saying even, uh, is that if you want professional politicians, you're better off to keep them longer. Uh, certainly, it'd be obvious with the chief of police. You know, you wouldn't want to be changing every eight years. Uh, we wouldn't automatically change our CEOs of a company every eight years just because we want a new one. But just thought to think about it. Because I think that's what it really boils down to. Um, and again, I, I said in the beginning, I'm, I'm not sure what's best, but I think there's what we did in the state of Missouri. Uh, I've heard people, like I said, who supported it and paid for it, and since then uh, have done it. Better. I think that term limits might be warmly embraced. Uh, I do have a question, which maybe someone can answer for me. Does including the word consecutive term limits make a difference? And there, I think. That that might be something worthy of consideration. Because that does not exclude a person from running and holding office multiple times up to X number of years, taking a little breather, and then maybe coming back if they're still warmly embraced. But that would be their own choice, wouldn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I am. Thank okay, you. I just want to make sure. Charlotte, you think you were. Well, and, I mean, I really don't have trouble with that because I do think that a lot of times you can get in there for every a day and you just stay there for every a day and there's no influx of new people. And everybody's all figured out about that. But I think that, you know, the way we have it on the standard side of you know, there's not a majority, I mean, there's five in each term, but there's four years between them has come along in, in solidifying the learning process. So, I mean, I really can be against, you know, eight or 12 years. Well, I mean, I'm sympathetic to the idea that the more Real term limits are needed in DC as opposed to the state of Missouri or, or locally, though, to be honest with you. Um, look, here's the deal uh, there, there's an incumbency advantage in the state and federal government, and the idea was that there was enough money being funneled in that things were getting more corrupt than usual in politics, and, uh, and so term limits were put in place to kind of alleviate that. If you live in a town where there's only 30,000 people, I, I don't. I didn't see a bunch of special interest money funneled in during my campaign when I ran against an incumbent. I, I really, I, I honestly don't see the practical need for it, at least from my perspective. Like I said, I'm a fan of term limits, um, especially at the federal level. I wish there was term limits there, um, but, um, or at least for content. But um, yeah, I, I don't really see, see the, the need for it in a town of, of 30,000 people. Uh, I don't see a great incumbency advantage at all. 
And it's not special, it's just money being funneled in here. If we keep it partisan, I'm not going to get off of that <laughs> right now. So anyway, that's just my two cents on that regard. And I do think you may run some problems. I mean, hypothetically, if you had term limits, you, you may have an issue in Ward 5 last election cycle. I mean, depending on what the term limits are. I mean, we had Norman run unchallenged because the person ran against them couldn't pay their taxes. So anyway, that's just something that's a point of consideration I'm throwing out there. So. I'm just going to throw this out. I can't find anybody to run for school board, and I know that's a whole different element. You don't have that many people lined up to run for older than either when election time comes. So I think it's something you better think about. The only thing I want to add was I, I, I understand what you're saying about if you're going to have term limits for one group, you should have it for all groups. And I do not especially agree with that. I don't think that that is a, a rule that you have to follow, or if it is, even as a rule, it's just a thought. If, if uh, some offices for your elected representatives, I believe that it would be helpful. Uh, I think also that their, the power of incumbency is, is great even on a local level. Uh, name recognition and, and so forth because it is somewhat a, a, a campaign almost everything that happens up here people they very carefully measure their words when they speak publicly uh, because they don't want to be seen in a bad light in the public's image of them and it's something that the challenger does not have the ability to go over so my point being that the term limits, I think that if you have open seats, there's always, I, I can't think of any time when we had an open seat where somebody didn't run for the office. I've always been able to find candidates. Yeah, you know about the final entity?
When we were doing by the people, they won by large majorities. They were challenged in court by office holders who didn't want to go, and they all lost in court. All right. With that, uh, let's go to 3.3, compensation. Compensation expenses. Um, and again, assuming we keep the name Board of Aldermen, City Council is interchangeable. So the Board of Aldermen may determine the annual compensation of this uh, board by ordinance and shall receive their actual necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties of office. Can you read that one more time? Sure. Uh, the Board of Aldermen may determine the annual compensation of this board by ordinance and shall receive their actual and necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties of office. And I would assume that's pretty much the way it is right now. I'll add this for a bit. What we do is it goes to a citizen oversight committee. If anybody gets so usually it never goes to the board of all it goes to they have to pass it. But whatever the citizen oversight committee recommends is what they do. In the last, I don't know, ten years they recommended no increase. So sometimes we increase the chief please. <coughs> uh, but the, the all of it has really changed that if the so so this is the compensation for the Board of Alderman members, and strictly just the Board of Alderman members. Um, and it's just saying, it's, I looked at other charters as well in MML, and it, you know, it, it was pretty, pretty basic, pretty standard on, on, on set this. By yeah. Set by ordinance is what pretty much it's saying. But as Jim was saying, though, there's an oversight committee yeah. that makes a recommendation. And if it were a race, it wouldn't take place until after the next election. Right. So is that something that you would want to include? I think it's by ordinance. It's by, it's by, it's by ordinance. ordinance. So there's an ordinance that already sets that up. Right. So. But why is that included in this conference? Well, the method there is a method of the seventh section. Yeah, the mayor's part of the council, but um, we, uh, in fact, the mayor is. The special affairs is, is section 3.4. Uh, I'm just double checking what I put down if that includes that or not. Um, well, that's the Maricopa 10. Well, then it's discussed in the Maricopa 10 as well in, there, in the mayor section 3.4. But um, I'll have to double check. But that may be an idea to include in that, obviously. Um, so I'll write that down. Yes, um, two potential issues. Um, in the first part of the sentence, the Board of Alderman may determine the annual compensation of this council by ordinance. Um, if citizens are allowed to bring petitions for ordinances or against ordinances, would that not um, exclude the Board of Alderman in some situations? We need to account for that. And the other issue is, um, it says the ordinance will determine the compensation, but not uh, anything about anything necessarily about when the compensation is due or anything of that nature. Is that something that should be mentioned here or not? Compensation is the ordinance. The ordinance is the best. I'm just saying it was not specifically. Yeah. 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 And if this is, if their actual necessary expenses are as approved by citizens of our site committee, what's wrong with including that particular language within the chamber? I mean, you say it's, it's, it's in, in the end, I don't understand all that as sincere. You said it's, it's done by ordinance that way. If it's done by ordinance that way, what's wrong with including that particular language within the charter so that it remains a job of the citizens oversight to approve those? Are you asking me a question? I'm asking you a question. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Um, I, I, can I can respond. And respond to question. The mechanism that is the Citizens Oversight Committee is created by the current board. And, and I think the, this is kind of like the, the discussion we had before. This is, the, this is to determine, this is the, the general, here's how it will be. Um, I think if, if we determine how, they, how the ordinance comes up, or what mechanism they use to determine actual necessary expenses and things like that. I, don't, I just think that's, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, it doesn't belong in the charter. That's a mechanism. We're telling them that they must do this. The, the wares house the machinery to do it. Yeah, that, that's kind of the point I was just going to make is 
to me, the I concept is that the structure is in place. That moves to my question. No, that's fine. That's Thank fine. you. I'm sure. Did Sandy and Craig? I was just going to say that it, it's somewhat a creature of the mayor in charge, but that's what this oversight committee gave me. I heard when it was formed. And uh, I don't even know if we did it by ordinance. I think that he created the oversight committee and appointed it with board approval. But I don't think there was anything written in law on it. Because it, it's not a law that you buy. It's a recommendation. <laughs> Eventually, at the end of the day, the board of law is going to vote on it. There's no way around that. That's where it stops. Any I, I was just going back. It's my one question was answered, but I don't think it matters. So. Okay. All right. so I, just, um, I remember when I was on the council that <clears throat> this is going to sound terrible with everybody, but some of the people on the have been on there for a member and never really never a member. I do think there needs to be a turnover more often in in some of the oversight companies. But that would be by ordinance also. Any more discussion on this one? I agree with Sandy. I think we need to set up a time maybe that they serve on these oversight committees. Because how are you ever going to get any new ideas or any new people involved if you keep putting the same, I'm going to use this term, old people on there year after year after year? But is that a responsibility of this commission or the charter? I don't mean, usually. Probably not. Okay, we'll do all of that. Again, probably not. Maybe the charter's responsibility is your own, or it does seem a bit like the hot star man now. I know. I know. But that's not our responsibility on that one. Any other discussion? All right, so I think we can get through that one. 3.4. Okay. Um, I keep saying this other section. Again, this is my opinion. <laughs> uh, section 3.4, uh, Mayor, there's a bit here, so, and I'm going to try to bring it out here. Uh, a mayor shall be elected at large. Each I already wrote this. I wrote down each <laughs> Thanks. So there's one problem there. Uh, <laughs> a mayor should be elected at, at large uh, for a term of four years. Let's we'll put it that way. Um, the mayor shall be a member of the board of aldermen and shall have the same qualifications for election as required for the other aldermen. The mayor shall serve as chairman and preside at meetings of the board of aldermen shall have the right to vote only in a situation of a split decision of or of the by the alderman that probably be worked too and shall be recognized as head of city government for all legal and ceremonial purposes and by the governor for purposes of military law that was taken straight out of the mml um, the mayor shall have no administrative duties and shall have no veto power the board of aldermen shall elect from among its members, actually I can stop there before I go to the mayor pro tem if you guys would prefer. Please. Okay, so we can see. the second part of this is about the mayor pro tem, so I'll probably stop just so we can talk about. Does the current mayor have veto power? My understanding is he does not. I, 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 he does, he does. And then, and then I'm, yeah, I'm mistaken, yeah. yeah. I found the board when the mayor veto taken, yeah. not this one. Not this one. Okay, and maybe that's why I'm. But I don't know, there may be changes to that. Well, because there's a veto power that they have. And they also have a sign. Only... Not a sign. We, we overrode it. It doesn't sign it as a standard veto. But this is yeah. our veto one. Yeah. I, think, I think it becomes law if the mayor doesn't sign it as long as it, a certain amount of time passes. Yeah. Right. You're right. It can still become law. It just becomes law without the signature. Um, I know it was a veto. Yeah, there's a veto. Yeah, yeah. I remember we overrode one more time. I think there is a veto. And the aspect that they only vote in situations of other times. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to let Lisa talk and I'm going to ask a couple questions. Shall have the right to vote should be changed. You shall have the privilege of voting. I mean, it's a little discussion. Say that again. Changing right to privilege. 
So do you guys, I guess the question I have is, do you wish to see a rewording on the section? Well, obviously it would be those section, but I mean, I mean that's a kind of question, but um, on the section where I have, shall have the right to vote only in a situation the split decision of the board of Alderman or the Alderman, or would you prefer a different wording on that end? That's how it is currently. It's, it's yeah, and according, that seems to be compliant with that statute. <coughs> Mr. Bowman just read. And again, I've only been involved in it for a year, but I've never seen I've not seen it. Just my understanding was it's going to be tied. It's a decision. So that's why it's sort of consistent. Yeah, so I think I think as as, as a matter of consistency, I don't know that, that changing changing the powers that to your office is in our best interest. I mean, I, I've been unable to find anything in your Gives them the veto authority. That doesn't mean it's not here because I'm sitting here trying to race through it. Um, but it it does define the, the voting and the, you know, the presiding over the board. Um, it also discusses the, the board having its own president, which I assume is the same as the mayor pro tem. Yeah. 
just want to ask a question. My husband's going to come in blue when I ask this. So if anybody has a band I can sleep on tonight, let me know. Okay, from what I understand, the mayor has no real power as such, okay? He's more like a figurehead. Am I, am I reading this right? Mayor shall be active and vigilant in enforcing all laws and ordinances for the government of the city, and he shall cause all subordinate officers to be dealt with promptly for any neglect or violation of duty. He is hereby authorized to call on every male inhabitant of the city over 18 years of age and under 50 to aid in enforcing the laws. That's <laughs> not intimidating. <laughs> Is it not is the state statute correct? Yes. Okay, so it's, 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 it's the statute that outlines for the last city Oh, oh. <coughs> it's, the, it's the statute that we're operating in. So, so something we may want to consider adding to this charter. Do uh, you want the mayor to be formal? I think that's Okay, so maybe I'm not hearing anything, so maybe I am. Uh, I heard just moments ago that the mayor could dismiss charges for city ordinance violations, and I just heard that the mayor shall enforce ordinances. So that leaves a bit of space between the two. Um, it's my understanding, and maybe a misunderstanding, that the city is basically run by the city administrator. Yeah, and so when we talk about whether the uh, how active our mayor is in actually running our government, it seems to me that the city administrator actually does that, maybe perhaps more than the mayor himself. Would you correct me? So are you suggesting we eliminate the mayor completely? There is no more mayor who is a city administrator. I didn't suggest it. I didn't suggest it. Well, not on this one. Somebody, yeah, somebody I, posted a question on the board. I was suggesting it, maybe. He ran the city a lot, so I'm asking if I'm mistaken about that. Well, that's my answer to the question. I, I, well, my point of view, the city administrator works at the direction of the elected officials. Now, how much the elected officials flex their muscle is a different way altogether. It, it's one of those. It's one of those, uh, what I read earlier about ensuring that all subordinates do their job and execute their duties. Um, it meant all. It doesn't, it doesn't pick anyone. So if, if the city has, has uh, positions that it has created to execute duties, it's his job to see that they do that. It doesn't say that he can't give up some of his own to them. But in the end, he's ultimately has that power. He being the CA or no, the mayor. It doesn't mean that they can't that, that you can't hire somebody to do that, which is what they have done, and then delegate the duties. The responsibility is still his. The doing is not necessarily his. Thank you for the explanation. There is a uh, it, it continues here and gives him the authority to grant reprieves, remit fines, grant pardons um, for offenses arising under the ordinances of the city but shall not be so construed to authorize the mayor to remit any cost which may have been accrued by any officer of said city by reason of any prosecution under the laws of ordinance So, in effect, in, in effect, he has the ability to grant partners for city ordinance violations. That's, that's, the, that's the answer to your question about enforcing the laws and, and then granting partners. He has the authority. It's just that part of the Lisa. Um, as far as ordinance is concerned, um, the chairing of the meetings, I believe that's currently under Robert's rules or whatever they have adopted for their meetings, theoretically. Um, and so I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest necessarily putting in anything confining in this document about that, but leaving it to the specific ordinance, which is easier to amend. Um, but it's just something I'm throwing out there in case there's confusion over duties as chair versus duties as mayor mayor. If that makes sense. 
Yes, and that should be a distinction. The things I've read are about the mayor's duties, not the duties of the, of the chair during board meetings. It's, it is two different things. So should we segregate that? I, I think if you're talking about, I think his section here about the powers of the mayor needs to consider these, the rest of these things here. We're going to, we're going to uh, if we're going to make, if we're going to create a charter, and we, if you're concerned at all about the, about what we have and whether or not it belongs in here, I think we need to consider those things. I don't know that they all need to be excluded. Um, if you care, I found the veto statute that gives them the veto power of this. And a lot of those things are included underneath Article 4 that deals specifically with the American. So we should be able to go forward with that. Uh, Dan, have one <coughs>
But after he left, after he wasn't reelected or didn't rerun, the city administrator told me personally that that mayor would tell him exactly where he could put his staff time, what he could pay attention to, and basically what he could or couldn't do. And he did tell me that. Uh, now, you were here then, but I, you know, but, uh, and then, and I watched, obviously, uh, Mayor Frank and how she dealt with the city administrator and, uh, and, and, and our current mayor. I think they were all a little bit different. Uh, and I think they all operated within how they chose to exercise their, their office of mayor. But that, what happened the first time could happen because it was not spelled out. He could tell the city administrator, you know, I'm the mayor, you can do what I tell you. We have a separate section coming up that deals right. specifically with the mayor and property. And since it's 907 right now, we're actually past our Yeah. 
then this is going to say next municipal election, maybe he said special election. General election, or whatever the name of it is. That way we don't have to pay for a special election, which my understanding is very expensive. Sure. Can you mind going back to capitalization? But since this is the mayor, shouldn't all the mayors, listening to these in here, be capitalized as the board of all of it is within that, within that paragraph? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? I mean, with the mayor pro tem side of this, is, is in it that you would like them annually? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is. Well, hold on. I think and that's that's what's normal. Um, yeah, I, I, I that's a good. Yeah, it's and that's obviously that's normally done, but we can put that in there. Yeah. You know, in, in fact, you may want to find land because I've seen it. Well. Yelled, Hell and I saw something, um, it said at something to the effect in some of the chart, which I didn't include to the effect that like the first regular meeting after um, an election or after an election. After the election was sort of after the election results were certified. Yeah, something to that effect. Um, so I will try to include something in there as well. Right. Uh, Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. This is just my ignorance. How do elections only occur every Two years of yeah. is that right? Mm -hmm. Then, I, I guess, are you elected the mayor pro tem for one year or two years? Well, and, and, and if you're doing it for one year, that's when oh, you're, that's when your problem yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it important to be one year as opposed to two? I, I think it is because, um, quite a, as a practical matter, the agency's lost the council to change in the space of the year. I'm sorry, say that. Well, the is on the city council change in the space of the year, and so you want to add that your, as the president of the board, can change. But if they only change every two years, I mean, you've got the same people for two years. I know. Let's say it's a year and a half. Someone you're supposed to do that. I don't understand it. I think well, right now they just do it every year. And, and I, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to understand. I don't have a preference. So the question is, since it's, it's the a legal, legal body, it yeah, happens once a year. Supposedly, it should happen at a regular cycle. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just make a date certain. It's usually done in April, is it not? Sometimes, right. Yeah, I think the wording since our charge is something to affect you about at the first regular meeting after the municipal election, if you will, at the annual April election. So so that's when we have two year terms. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been tied up on how long the person should be mayor pro tem. Uh, sometimes in like the process how it took place, especially sometimes we change from mayor to mayor. Uh, but I think there's you know this uh, merit of having a two year. Um, so I, mean, I don't know. We we might want to give the thought of how. Or I guess it's done by is it done by corners on how we see that's what it's been a really fuzz exactly no one is chair of mayor of mayor nobody really knows and but, but there is a process here it is that the board elects yeah. And, yeah. And, and I suppose if you want to elect the same one over and over, that's the board's prerogative. It's kind of important. It says right here though yeah. that the board elects it, not, yeah. not that it's chosen. I think it's chosen now, isn't that right? Yeah, I, the, the process changed. I'll give you my example. When I first joined the board, I was sworn in. I went and sat down, and they let the mayor pro tem. It's like I don't even do anybody who I was voting for. And then another mayor came in, and, and then that changed, and then it even changed after the third mayor. So it's just how long you wait to do it, and who's going to decide who it's going to be. But the decision to who it's going to be is as the board. board. It's and, in here. It's and, the board. Yeah. Right. And through the whole right. process, it was, you know, I think that there are times when we were hard feelings over. And uh, I, I just, if we had a better process, we could avoid that. I, I don't know, you, you, I know you have good thoughts on that. It's not to think about the future, right? When we come back. Well, and I know it's been a big deal, but the big deal has been though, that you didn't, the board didn't choose, did they? Yeah, the, board, the board chose. Oh, yes. The board chose. Nominations were made from the board of other members of the board, and then votes were taken, and one got the majority one. I think it had to be over, it had to have over six, because we had some.
by my ties. It didn't really move too much. One time the mayor jumped in and voted that. Was kind of <laughs> Sometimes the mayor is at this moment to be mayor pro tem. And then we have people on the board who talk about, well, who do you want to be mayor pro tem? Off to the side. Well, how would you choose, I guess, if the board's not going to vote? Well, as a practical matter, it's kind of like a vice president. It might become necessary upon the absence of the mayor of the permanent position, you know, something terrible happens to the mayor. And that's somewhat important. I mean, they are the head of the city, and they do pretty much control the agenda, you know, as to what, how the, the table is being set. Uh, they are, uh, as, you know, what we're going to do, what direction we're going to be going. But, and I understand that, but so, I don't You know, how that's, why, that's why I think it's important that it, it be very flexible to change year after year, because I've seen people go up there, the best of friends, and part the worst of enemies. I've seen people come in, enemies, and, and become the best of friends. It's, it's, it's an interesting... Well, I, I don't think it would be here. What I'm asking is about, about the process. It, it's saying that the board elects them here. Yes. Is, is that... Yes. I'd like to think about it. No, that's not... I'd like to think about that. Come back. Because I don't know right now, but... So I think if you're going to do it... If you're going to do it annually, you're, you're not going to be able to use right. the general election. <laughs>
perception that this process that the board selects is flawed. It might not. Well, there's that's why people on the majority choose. Yeah. So I don't know if we can address that. <laughs> you know, I think it could be. your concern is just the politics going on between ten people. Is that accurate?
we don't have much of a turnout in April. I know, but I don't know. I mean, it's sad how much, how well, well the turnout is in April. But I, I don't think, I think we've had this discussion earlier on that in order to do this process the way it needs to be done, I, I think we really need to make sure that we spend adequate time and not rush it and make sure we get through it. So, uh, yeah, if we, if we could be done by August and, and you know, get it on in November, but still, again, that's going to be a special election, which costs additional funding. Is that our budget? Not correct. Costs more than our budget. Yeah. So, uh, that's something that we need to consider, too. But I, I mean, I personally, I don't see it happening. At the last meeting, I talked about lawyers. Uh -huh. And Sandy, were you going to get the name of the lawyer from West Plains that they use? Did I misunderstand that? Or? I don't have a copy of that. But um, I know Marcus had said that he had several lawyers. Right. That okay. they were not terribly expensive. Okay. Now, as for anything else, though, we made a point of order that there be points of contact between individuals and so forth like that. So uh, I have a plan to contact Mr. Mortensen, get some names, uh, and then we can bring those before the council here for the commission, and then other people can add additional names to that okay. so we can make it uh, have some discussion. Okay, great. Why don't you just advertise for it? Yeah. As somebody that's owned a business and ran a business, I know how I, I know what advertising does and doesn't do, and I don't know if it always gives you the best representative. Put it on the city's website. Uh, we can obviously do that. If, if you do that, then anybody can come forward from that source. Uh, but they, they would need to have a person a point of contact. Who would that point of contact be? Uh, I believe that would probably be me at that point. Yeah. So, um, yes, Susan. What legal qualifications are you looking for? A constitutional attorney? Somebody that's got charter experience, that's for sure. I mean, uh, and Mr. Mortensen said that he had quite a few that would be interested in doing it for those that were here. Uh, yes. and then, they were very reasonable in cost. And they keep you good contact. Yes, yeah, I do too. Right, well, we'll go ahead and start with Mr. Morrison, but we can definitely put it on the city website. And we'll just look at all, everybody in their qualifications. So we're going to get the end of the day. Um, Any other additional business before we adjourn? The next meeting is set for Monday. Remember, we go back to Monday, June. Um, well, we're just going to go on through the process. So, uh, Jason was mentioning about the next articles. I think it would be helpful if everybody reviews uh, the next articles. I would be prepared to try to get through all the three and then have a chance to also review the ones that we've already gone over to make sure that we're got the language in them that we want. So I think there'll be plenty on our agenda to, to do that. To go, um, the agenda for next meeting, which is Monday, which is June 9th, uh, would be to uh, go over the wording to the part that we've already done in the preamble, and then go right into completing uh, section three. But I would, be, I would always, have you be prepared to go into the next article too. So that next article is four. It'd be nice if we could get into article four by that time, which is on the merits so, of so, so does anybody have anything else? Yes. All right. You want to go You had a committee for four, uh, one, two, and three. So well, and that's something that we need to clarify. I mean, uh, one is less than four. Is that right? Right. But it still has to be open to the public. So if it's a subcommittee uh, of four or more, I believe. That's right. It just has to be under a majority, so it has to be over six. Okay. It can't be over six. Uh, but it has to be open to the public, so you actually.
actually have to let everybody know when the meeting is, where it's at, and publicize it 24 hours in advance. So. And what about non-committee members from the commission? Well, that's just it. I mean, we all, I think, should be prepared uh, to do our input into each article, in each section of each article. So uh, that's what I'm saying. Everybody needs to be familiar with the, 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 uh, the charter model and then uh, try to be as familiar with our current form of government and everything so we can go through. Any other? Let's go back to something we discussed in the beginning of the meeting about the microphones. Yeah. There's a cord, I'm oh, sorry. Microphones. There's a cord going out from Lisa's computer over there that everybody is avoiding tripping over tonight. And I realize it's not taped down like you said the microphone cords would have to be. There's also plugins up there where her stuff is plugged in. You could run, push these tables back that way and put cord, put microphones out here in the center or just maybe three or four of them out here. The public could hear us. We could hear each other better, probably, if, if it was put into the sound system. But I really don't think it's that big a deal as it was made out to be. And I think it can be corrected very easily if people were reasonable at City Hall. I just haven't had a chance to talk with Teresa directly, which I will make sure I do this week, yes. I, I appreciate that. So. Uh, I have questions about the City Hall we are elected by the same people that elected them that run this place and they have microphones when they meet the public has the right to hear what we have to say if we're not favors up yet we should be able to have a meeting so the public can participate and understand what's going on i think it's just important to figure out because it really is open to every elected official i just want to make sure that we're not understanding i don't think anybody's going to come stop fine on the floor any other discussion? Yes. Um, for those that know, I was out of town attending a wedding of uh, one of my former swimmers, but uh, I, I, my question is um, so as you review each article, um, I know you said that we're all participating, but is there a community that you appointed that's writing that article or uh, fill me in on how you organize this? Well, originally we set up smaller groups to, to meet that wouldn't be actually a form committee, uh, just so that they could do a fact-finding uh, deal to bring as much information to the table as possible for our whole commission to review. Uh, I would still like to continue that process uh, because uh, when people get together, they can bounce ideas off each other. I guess electronically, we can't do it with more than three people. Unless it's a subcommittee. And in that question of process, I just wonder what you're doing. So, the same two or three people will be writing the whole charter? No, or, no. Or, uh, I, would, I would hope that we would get volunteers uh, to take different articles okay, and, and choose, you know, uh, how that information needs to be summarized and what information on the current forms of government that we have. Uh, yeah, and that's that. One thing that I think would be helpful, I, mean, I realize you, you emailed everybody, and I, I write a thought that they're all in my desk, of course. Um, if we had, if somebody who does come up with something like Ted provided and copies to everybody, that that's, that's very helpful to follow the discussion. And that's something that's sort of said in the past, City Hall provided to the Charter Commission was to provide these copies to people if they somebody had the time to put them all together and sit with this. We need 13 sets of this. Which? Yeah. I was going to say, um, my mother will theoretically volunteer for a much more normal fee. <laughs> because we do have to pay City Hall, so if we. No, they, no, no, the mayor has the ability. As we discussed earlier, to weigh these things, ask him. He won't say anything. Okay, in case that doesn't pan out, she's just uh, well, made herself yeah, available. He, so says, she's he says, no, I'm going to charge you 15 cents a copy. Please let me know. Okay. Um, that world will know. But um, because she does the minutes and agenda anyway, I mean, I don't know. It's up to you. I'm just throwing it out there. This. Greg is right. The mayor does have the right to weigh. I understand. No, no, but I mean, it 
should be a, a function that the city should provide. It's something that yeah, we should start working with, yeah, providing our time to the community. We do not want a political statement. Sorry? We do not want a political statement. I just want a photocopy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, So as you're reading um, through the model charter, if there's areas that you feel like you've got a good understanding of them and would like to participate on the subcommittee, uh, let us let me know uh, at the next meeting and we can get that uh, uh, set, I guess, so that you can work on those committees. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything else. It's not as I'm done.